Okay, now, today our project is going to be a scoop. Now, scoops have been around for, oh, donkey's years. Hundreds and hundreds of years. In this country, even up to the mid-1920s, they were still using mostly wooden scoops. Um, because that's what they had. They didn't have a method to make a scoop any other way. So scoops are made out of wood, uh, by and large. Um, the one that we'll make today is fairly small. It starts with a two and three quarter inch square piece about six inches long. And it, this particular one is made out of maple. Maple is a good choice for a scoop. It's a close grain wood. It's not going to absorb a lot of whatever you're trying to scoop. It will stay cleaner longer. Now I've put a coat of uh, butcher block finish on it um, and it's a it's a nice project it's going to teach you deep hollowing which we haven't done to date um, and we'll get started on the project and we'll turn it from start to finish as we go through the video Okay, we're ready to actually start. Uh, you can notice I've already put the blank in the chuck. The blank started out at two and three quarters square by six inches long. And I've already turned it round. Uh, you've already seen that in previous demos, so there's no need to repeat it. The first step that we'll do from here is going to be to turn this to a cylinder at two and three eighths of an inch in diameter. It's currently about two and three quarters. So we'll use a parting tool and we'll turn down a spot on each end at two and three eighths. And then we'll have uh, a reference point at each end as we turn this to a cylinder to the correct diameter. And we'll start with the parting tool. Then we're two and a half. We got a little bit more to go. All right, there's our two and three eighths on that end. There's our two and three eighths on that end. Now, all we have to do now is use our bowl gouge and we'll go between the two marks and turn the whole cylinder down to our two and three eighths. Now that gives us a nice smooth cylinder at the diameter that we're looking for. Our next step is to square up the end.
Now we can use a bowl gouge with a pull cut to do this and it should be, should be fairly simple. Because all we want to do is get the end of this nice and smooth and flat. And all of this is going to be hollowed out anyway, so we really only need it right at the edge. Um, now our next step is to start hollowing it out, so we will do that in just a moment. I'll have to change the camera angle so you'll be able to see the hollowing operation a little bit better. So we'll be back in just a moment and we'll hollow this out. Hollow this out. Now there are a couple of different ways that we could do this. Um, there's a specific way in the write-up, but that's just one method. There's actually numerous ways that you could do this. You could do it uh, the traditional way that we would hollow out a bowl, where you do uh, the first part of it with a bowl gouge. And that's how it's written up in your written material. Um, now this is a good place to use the little cheater method that we've talked about before, where you take your parting tool and you start a cut. And then you have a, a ledge to put your bow gouge against so it can't run back across that edge. Um, and then you would take your bow gouge and remember you need to be on the bevel. Now to make this starting cut in here the handle needs to be over at about a 45 degree angle to the tool rest and the bevel needs to be uh, the parallel to the groove in here. So it would look something like this. with the handle way over here. start uh, hollowing this out. We've got more than we need here. Uh, according to your plans, you need a diameter of two and an eighth, and we're still under uh, two inches here, which gives us a little bit more working room. Um, we can only go a little bit further. 
Um, it's difficult to use a bow gouge uh, when you start getting deeper than you are wide. You just reach a point where you can no longer stay on the bevel. And that's going to become a problem real soon. So we can switch from the bowl gouge to uh, the Easy Wood Tool Scraper. These are the hollowing tools that we have at the school. And they uh, do a very good job of deep hollowing. And the important thing about using it is your tool rest must be set properly. The cutter head must be in the center. If it's not in the center, there's going to be a problem. Um, it's going to catch, it's going to uh, vibrate, it's going to chatter. But if you keep it in the center, it will cut smoothly and consistently. If you look at your plans, you'll notice that we need to go two and three sixteenths deep and two and an eighth inch wide. Now, if you do the math, uh, the sides, the insides of your hollowing needs to be parallel to the outside for an inch and a sixteenth before you start the, the hemispherical curve. So that first inch, the sides inside here need to be straight in. No curve, straight in. And the tendency that you have, that you have to be very, very careful about, is you tend to undercut in here. Once you start cutting in here, you tend to go inside the diameter on the outside. So it's an undercut. And that's going to cause you a great deal of problems. You need to go straight back for that first inch and then do your curve. And we still have more to go on this diameter. Uh, we're still less than two inches here. We need to wind up two and an eighth. So, um, but the important thing here is to get an inch deep with straight sides. And so far I'm not quite there. I've got about seven eighths. So I've got my straight sides and I should be about an inch deep, just a little bit more. Now I've got my inch and a sixteenth deep and my wall is straight. So I need now to get the correct 
Um, inside diameter. So I need to go just a little bit more in the diameter. And that's actually all I'm going to take out. But my inside walls are straight in. They're parallel to the outside. And I've got my inch in the sixteenth in depth. Now I need to go an additional uh, inch and an eighth. So I wind up with my inch and three sixteenths in depth. So now the rest of this is going to be a hemispherical cut. But I'm not going to keep coming back out on this. This first inch is finished. Uh, there's no reason to come back out here. We just are working a hemisphere on the bottom. So we're about an inch and three quarters deep. about a two and a sixteenth. So you have just a little bit more to go.
Okay, that's about where we want to be. I've got my straight sides and I've got my hemisphere. So now I need to make a mark at two and three eighths. Now this would give me the depth of the outside of the scoop. Now, if our scoop is to this depth, then the inside is to this line. So this line should give us enough clearance around the scoop. So when we shape the outside of the scoop to match the inside, we know that we're not going to cut into the hollowed out portion. So that's our line. We'll use the parting tool and we're just going to cut down to about an inch and a half. inch and five eight so we'll go a little bit more. Now, now we can start with our bowl gouge and we'll start shaping the outside. Now the goal here is to match the outside to the inside. Now we can put a reference mark at an inch. They're about an inch and a sixteenth. Now this was the flat part that we did on the inside. So we know that this part is flat on the inside. So we don't need to cut anything to the, the right side of this line. Everything will be cut to the other side of the line. Now, you do this carefully and you do it by feel. You can use your uh, index finger on the inside, your thumb on the outside, and you can feel. What you want is an, to actually match the outside to the inside. Now, if you need to, you can cut all of this back. You're not going to need any of this. And if it's in your way, you just cut it back.
Okay, now I'm getting closer to the shape that I want. Then we're going to have to take this down a little bit to get to the handle. Now I'm going to change the camera angle so you can see that a little bit better while we turn the handle. So I'll set that up and I'll be right back. Okay, now while we've got this the way it is, it's going to be a good time to go ahead and sand this portion of the scoop. We'll reduce that speed to about 800. Now when you've got larger surfaces and you're trying to sand, if you use the sandpaper like this and you just hold it against the piece, your bearing surface is very small and that's going to take you a long time to sand. But if you'll open your sandpaper up, wrap it all the way around the piece, now your bearing surface is this large and that's going to give you a much, much faster cut um, and it will reduce the amount of time it takes you to sand. So that'll give us a 220 grit sand and that's plenty for what we're doing now. So as you can see, I've got my contour on the outside and it seems to match the inside pretty good. You won't know until we actually finish this and then cut the scoop out. Uh, we won't really know how consistent our wall thickness is. So. Uh, our next step is going to be to set up and cut the, the handle. We're pretty much finished with the scoop portion, but now we need to turn our handle. And we'll set up for that, and I'll be right back. Now, our next step is to turn the rest of the cylinder down to the inch and a half that we have here. The reason that we're doing this in increments, our handle is only three quarters of an inch in diameter, but we don't want to turn the whole thing down to three quarter because it would reduce the material that we have that's going to be available for support. There's nothing supporting this end. So the thinner this gets out away from the chuck, the, the less support that you have in the more it's going to vibrate when you put a tool against it. So we want to maintain as much material as possible for as long as possible. So that's why we're only going to turn this down to an inch and a half. Now, we can turn this side down with the parting tool. And we need that at the inch and a half. So we need just a little bit more. Now we'll take our bowl gouge and we'll turn away all of that material. Okay, and that's going to be close enough to what we need to do. Now, we need a line at three and a half. Now, our next step is to turn the rest of the cylinder down to the inch and a half that we have here. 
The reason that we're doing this in increments, our handle is only three quarters of an inch in diameter, but we don't want to turn the whole thing down to three quarter because it would reduce the material that we have that's going to be available for support. There's nothing supporting this end. So the thinner this gets out away from the chuck, the, the less support that you have in the more it's going to vibrate when you put a tool against it. So we want to maintain as much material as possible for as long as possible. So that's why we're only going to turn this down to an inch and a half. Now, we can turn this side down with the parting tool. And we need that at the inch and a half. So we need just a little bit more. Now we'll take our bowl gouge and we'll turn away all of that material. Okay, and that's going to be close enough to what we need to do. Now, we need a line at three and a half. I believe it was three and a half. Okay, now we have our mark at three and a half, and that's going to be the first part of the handle. Now we're going to leave all of this at the inch and a half, and we're going to turn this down to three quarters so we can work the first part of the handle. So we'll use a parting tool on the left hand side of this mark, and we'll take that down to three quarters. Just a little bit more. Now, we can do this several different ways. We can use the parting tool uh, to remove the majority of this material.
Now, before we remove this last part, I still need some room to cut back uh, to follow the contour on the inside. So I'm going to use the, uh, the bowl gouge. to continue this profile all the way down. And that'll work out pretty good. Now I can turn the details on here. Now, I've made my marks at the 9 16 the 1 16 and the half inch. And that's going to locate the, a ball that's on the end of the handle. And then a place where the handle actually begins with a little uh, detail in it that's shown on the plans. So I need to take a spindle gouge. And we'll start rolling that bead. Now we have the bead that's on the end of the handle, and now we'll begin to take the handle back. Now, we'll mark five inches that will locate the end of our handle. Now, we're going to slowly turn all of this material off until we have formed the handle that we're looking at. And then we can part the whole thing off and then we can cut the front and see it. But before we do that, we're going to need to sand what we have because we won't be able to do that later. We're now ready to continue 
to turn the handle. Uh, we know where it's going to end. We just have to continue this contour. It comes back out a little bit bigger than this. And then we're back here. Now we'll do this in increments, the way we've been doing. I'm not going to take this whole thing down to a smaller diameter. I'm only going to take it down as I need it. Now, our biggest diameter back here is going to be 7 eighths of an inch. And I'm back far enough now to where I can use my parting tool and I can take that down to the 7 eighths. That's about the seven eighths I'm looking for. Now it's just a matter of continuing to form the contour and then roll the end down this way. Now a lot of this material is going to have to be removed. So I'll readjust my two rest and we'll get us a little bit of slack back here.
Now we'll switch to the spindle guide. Now, we're going to go ahead and do our sanding on this part of the handle, then we'll part that off and see what we have. Now, you can see clearly that the front of this scoop is wobbling. It's no longer centered. That just illustrates what I've told you many, many times. The only constant in the universe is that wood moves. So as I've removed this material, there was internal stress in this particular piece of wood that caused this front to deflect once I started thinking it out back here. Uh, this is why you sand as you go. This is why you turn as you go. You do it in an incremental approach and when it does something like this, once it's off the lathe you won't be able to see any of that. But if you weren't already prepared to deal with it, then it would cause you a problem at this point because you couldn't go back. You can't go back and put a tool on something that's so out of center. Uh, but we're still good back here. So the only thing we have left to do on the lathe is to part that off and then we'll finish sanding the, the base by hand. So we'll do that and then I'll show you how to cut the scoop on a bandsaw.
Now, I'm going to have to do this with two hands, uh, one hand holding the piece, the other hand will cut it off. And now all we have to do is trim all of this off and sand the end of the handle round and that's finished. And then we'll just take our scoop and we'll make a cut that will take uh, a portion of the, the scoop out. And I'll show you that in just a moment. Oh, okay. Now, we're ready to actually make the cut that's going to form the scoop. Now we more or less have a goblet uh, with no... Uh, base. So what we have to do is go through the bandsaw in such a way that we can cut off the top half and then round the front in one movement. Um, before you do that, it pays to look at the grain in your scoop. Um, I like to cut it uh, kind of with the grain. Um, so it's going to go in pretty much with the, the grain vertical as I make my cut. Now, I need to leave enough of the, enough above the handle so I can't go straight to the button. It's got to be above that button and it pretty much has to be freehand. Um, and it's going to look something kind of like this. Now, as we look at the scoop, um, I missed keeping this the same diameter all the way around. I got it a little bit thin in the back. Uh, it's still a good scoop. It's not going to break. But it would have looked better if this width of this rim would have been the same all the way around. So that's what you're shooting for when you turn it. Uh, I missed the boat. Hopefully, you'll do better. Now, there's only one other step, and I'll set up the camera, and I'll show you that. And I'll show you that. Okay. Now we have our scoop, and we're ready to clean up this edge. Now, what I'm going to do is put it against the belt sander, and just rotate it around until I've got a, a clean edge and a nice contour, and it'll look something like this. And now I have a nice clean contour all the way around and all I've got to do now is sand this edge and kind of put a nice round over on it and I've got a nice scoop. Now this is what we have. So uh, this is the scoop. I hope you'll be able to take this and go to your lathe at home and actually turn it.